Welcome to my little talk uh, about Bach and the piano, or, well, one could say Bach and various keyboard instruments. Normally in this room it has my forte piano here, uh, but today I only have the Mane Spinet at my disposal, uh, because I'm touring with the, with the forte piano now with Amstom Sinfonietta. Uh, yeah, a couple of things that I've been researching into and uh, diving into the last, I think, seven or eight years is uh, trying to give the audience that comes to my concerts the experience of what it means when musicians on stage uh, take the Baroque, well, let's say building stones, uh, on stage to new directions. Uh, that's maybe a difficult way of saying to improvise with Baroque material or early music material. And one of the things uh, with my trio actually that we experimented with quite a bit is uh, figuring out uh, what, what figuren uh, Bach or Buxtehude or Handel or, or people write, that in their compositions they work out. So if you, that's how I've seen it, if you look at the scores now of uh, actual Bach music, you see some figuren he is uh, inspired by or with. And he develops it in an incredible way, obviously. Uh, one of the first steps when I started out with this uh, traject, or, or this whole yeah, trip, uh, I can say. So what we've tried with simple two parts or three part inventions is to put the pause button on and elaborate, you know, on, on those same figuren that, that Bach uses himself. Figuren. Uh, actually, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it quite much because it's uh, it just gives direction to your improvisation. It's not like that I'm improvising all free, you know, all of a sudden. That that that, that we would combine early music, making a strong cut, and then just going somewhere uh, uh, free improv. Uh, I like it more when it's engaging for the listener, for, for our audience, to hear what the improvisation comes from, you know. Uh, another thing that we have experimented with, which is nicest to do if there's more people on stage, is to improvise in a polyphonic way. We play the early music sources, let's say this thing is in C minor, up until this point. Here we continue improvising in the tonality of C minor, or at least we start in C minor. And for instance, I would start off uh, with a line and, and, and uh, the other musicians would, would join in and while listening to each other, recreate something uh, moving and polyphonic all the way. And then just by giving a cue, we would continue to, to another passage. <laughs> I find it interesting that, uh, for instance, when, when I play in jazz clubs or on, on, on jazz festivals, where there obviously would be a Steinway or a modern instrument, if we include to the program some early music pieces, like Ich Wurf zu dir, Herr Jesu Christ, this, this chorale by Bach, which we've played quite often actually, mm -hmm. I feel that just because this context is different, people have heard modern jazz, improvised stuff, or world music, whatever. And then we introduce uh, two or three early music 
uh, pieces, somehow it seemed to touch their heart more easily because they're not expecting this, you know. They come, they come here something else and then all of a sudden, for instance, with these, these chorales, uh, it's like well, it, it blows people away because the contrast is just so big. Because before they've heard very vibrant, I don't know, with, with, with drums and everything. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden this, this wonderful Bach chorale comes up. So in my uh, performance practice, which includes world music, jazz and early music, uh, one of the gains for me personally is to, to mix within my set list things in such a way that it becomes like alchemy for the listener because they, they, they don't know what to expect. And I, I guess if you don't really know what to expect, your heart might be more open to receiving something, you know? This, this surprise element of playing actual early music in a total different context I think reaches people easier, maybe, and uh, and you actually reach a new public, people that would come for, well, hearing the world music that I play or the jazz that I play, they actually get some early music added to it. And, and many times their questions would be about the early music uh, uh, part. So I found that rather striking. So improvising with the figuren, it takes uh, quite some individual study where I uh, transcribed some things uh, that, for instance, Handel or, or, or Bach writes, writes down and that they, in their compositions, elaborate on and, and, and go, go places with. Uh, I try to make the original figure as simple as possible so that I can transpose it to other keys, that I have it literally at hand to, to, to incorporate it somewhere. I think when studying this kind of material together with, with your other musicians, if you want to be engaged in uh, more contrapuntal or, or uh, fugetic uh, improvising, it's super nice to do because it, it, it engages your ear because you're creating these figures in yourself and the other player on stage might, might be introducing another figure. So you really need to listen carefully who goes where. But I, I do have the impression that the, uh, the public feels feels this kind of energy that I would have on stage with, with my colleagues uh, playing over this stuff and I don't know how it works but people people feel on the edge of, of, of their seat to to see what's going on because actually this could totally fail as well of course. An angle to engage the public into something that's created on the spot but it has a reference point you know well, we start out with actual early music we end with actual notes, composed notes, so to say, and in between the public is inv invited to uh, join along with us, uh, hearing where we take it, that very concert.